Texas A&M is home to the Hypervelocity Impact Laboratory. Here, a two-stage light gas gun accelerates 2 to 10 millimeter diameter projectiles of varying shapes to velocities ranging 2 to 8 kilometers per second. Two-stage light gas guns accelerate projectiles by compressing a light gas, typically hydrogen or helium, to high pressures using a consumable polymer piston and a gunpowder charge. The gases released from the powder charge combustion propels the polymer piston down the pump tube, compressing the light gas. Once the light gas reaches a critical pressure, a diaphragm ruptures, releasing the high-pressure gas that accelerates the projectile. The projectile is protected during acceleration by a four-piece polymer sabot. The sabot is aerodynamically separated from the projectile during free flight. Before entering the target tank, the projectile passes through two lasers. The measured time between the laser interruptions coupled with the fixed distance between the lasers provide an accurate projectile velocity. Regardless of velocity, a dynamic delay generator accurately generates a delay trigger for the camera. Finally, the projectile enters the target tank and impacts the desired target. In the Hypervelocity Impact Laboratory, safety is a top priority. The research team begins every experiment by reviewing the detailed operational checklist. This discussion allows for any safety concerns to be addressed and to ensure all researchers are on the same page. To begin an experiment, the desired target is weighed and rigidly fixed into the target tank via a modular target fixture, which was designed in collaboration with the Texas A&M undergraduate design team. In the Hypervelocity Impact Laboratory at Texas A&M, we have the ability to test a wide range of materials at various impact configurations, such as normal or oblique. Materials and material systems currently investigated include high-performance concretes, polymers, metals, carbon composites, stitch composites, and additively manufactured structures. Additionally, we have the capability to impact water droplets and visualize shockwave interactions. Our target fixture allows for heavy specimens to be rolled into the target tank and can accommodate specimens with thicknesses exceeding three feet and lateral dimensions ranging from two inches to two and a half feet. Before preparing the rest of the two-stage light gas gun, a boresight laser is used to pinpoint the exact location of impact and the target tank door is finally bolted shut. The central breech assembly safely contains the high peak pressures that the working gas, hydrogen, reaches during the two-stage light gas gun compression process. This assembly houses the scored pedal valve, which is designed to rupture at a critical pressure and initiate the projectile acceleration. The desired projectile package, containing the projectile and its abo, are carefully weighed. Our current setup can accommodate spherical, cylindrical, long rod, buckshot, and ogive projectile types with diameters ranging 2 to 12.7 millimeters. Once weighed, the projectile package is carefully loaded into the bore of the flight tube, where it will remain until the pedal valve ruptures. The pump tube pneumatically translates forward, suspending the central breech between the pump tube and the flight tube. A protective steel collar surrounds the entire central breech assembly, while a hydraulic piston couples the assembly together at 9,000 PSI. Once the central breech has been assembled, the blast and target tank vacuum procedure is initiated from the control room by the remote control pneumatic valves. Our main vacuum pump can achieve approximately one thousandth of an atmosphere in 20 minutes. A two-stage light gas gun in general requires two powder charges, what we call the primary and the secondary charge. The primary charge is a fast-burning black powder encased in a 762 NATO brass cartridge. The main job of the primary charge is to ignite the secondary charge evenly, starting the two-stage light gas gun chain reaction. The secondary charge is significantly larger and requires more preparation. The slower-burning smokeless powder charge is built around a tube that evenly distributes the hot gases from the primary charge. Typical pressures in the powder breach achieved from the secondary charge range from 5,000 to 30,000 PSI. The secondary charge mass serves as the main variable for projectile velocity, and the high pressure gas resulting from the ignition is the driving force for hydrogen compression. A polymer piston acts as a barrier between the powder and the hydrogen gas. The expanding gases from the secondary charge propel the piston up to 3,000 feet per second down the pump tube, compressing the hydrogen gas into the central breach. Following compression piston insertion, the secondary charge assembly is carefully loaded into the powder breach safely secured by the breech plug. Powder breech pressures and piston velocities are measured during the experiment and results are used to increase simulation prediction accuracy. Both operational and experimental diagnostic equipment are triggered by the laser velocimetry system, a series of two laser curtains that are sequentially interrupted in conjunction with the dynamic delay generator, a high-speed computer that determines the velocity-dependent trigger time. 
A 10 million frames per second optical camera serves as one of our main diagnostic instruments. Our camera setup can quickly be transitioned to a high-speed SLIRIN system. SLIRIN is a proven technique used to visualize density gradients in gases. We employ this system to visualize shock structures present in our high-speed flow environments. Additionally, a dual-head 450 kilovolt flash x-ray system allows for nanosecond resolution stop-motion radiography. Once the diagnostics are configured, the laboratory is evacuated and the two-stage light gas gun is prepared for pressurization. However, a thorough walk around is critical for a final safety and diagnostics check. A flashing light indicates that the two-stage light gas gun is in the arm configuration and that entrance into the lab is prohibited. Finally, the primary charge is inserted into the powder breech, which awaits triggering by a striker and solenoid assembly housed in the firing breech. Before entering the control room, the operator turns on the gas supplies and carefully places the striker in the firing breech. Strategically placed CCTV cameras allow the lab to be monitored remotely from the control room for operational safety and lab security purposes. The pump tube is pressurized, the capacitor is charged, and after a brief countdown, the two-stage light gas gun is fired. Immediately after the experiment, the blast and target tanks are brought to atmospheric pressure and the powder gases are vented from the pump tube. Once the tanks are equalized, remaining gases and dust are vented. After adequate venting, the two-stage light gas gun is safe for disassembly and the target specimen is ready for post-impact analysis. Depending on the target type, analyses include microscopy, high-resolution imaging, mass loss and perforation geometry measurements, and other material characterization. The research conducted at the Texas A&M Hypervelocity Impact Laboratory is of critical importance for future development of military and space technology.